Yeah. Positive. A little bit emotional. One final push. Can't quite believe it. One of the hardest things. Yeah. Had to do. Like a challenge. Yeah. A bit, bit more than I thought it would be. Yeah. We haven't finished. Keeping warm, no problems. Hot one, here we come. All good, moving strong on the final stretch. So um, I think everyone's mood is picking up a bit. It's starting to feel pretty real now. So just push on for the last 20 mile and get it done. We've had a mixture of everything throughout the week, really. Uh, Harsh stone to bog, uh, a lot of frozen ground obviously, some of the slabs are lethal when they've got ice on them, um, so you've got to be really careful. Still moving, surprised myself, want to give it 100%. I overslept, <laughs> I was meant to have a one hour sleep but ended up having four, so um, so I feel really good because I've slept more than I have all week <laughs> today. I don't know, it's going to be a hard day. You know, it's going to rain, it's going to be windy. What else way to be welcome to Scotland? We're hopefully on the home street. It's a bit gusty. It's not warm, it's great. Unfortunately, Kate Farley this morning had to retire. Um, she fell ill on the trail six miles outside of Bellingham. So we sent her very best wishes. Speedy recovery. I'm the sort of individual who enjoys this sort of thing, <laughs> which may, may sound quite sadistic, but um, I generally do. Um, this is my third spine, and I promise myself the last. But we shall see. I'm actually enjoying it. You know, heading towards the finish line. That's the reason why, you know, I'm a little bit happy. deprivation has been getting to me a bit but uh, I can't even can't comprehend like where we've come from and all those days that have passed I don't think I've had time to process those memories and you know I think it'll be a long time coming once I've finished to be able to kind of go through it all and you, you know you suddenly a memory pops up in your head about being somewhere like high cup nick and you think oh yeah that was amazing when when was that it was you know a week ago two weeks ago oh no it's like a couple of days ago so yeah it's gonna feel fantastic to get across the finish line We are trying to stay warm <laughs> and I'm soaked through. My batteries are flat. My feet have been wet for so long that they're all blistered up right now. So, but we can smell the price. <laughs> Doing 
the times like I'm doing, it's a lot of it's about mental effort. I'm looking forward to putting my feet in a basin of hot water and I'm looking forward to having a pint of Guinness. Going over the shill, it was really, really windy. I was getting blown all over the place. And you just want it over then, but we still have several miles to go. So I find the whole mental approach, uh, mental aspects of ultra running really interesting and that mental side and how the emotions come into play so much. And it's, you're in a bubble as well, right? You know, you're the daily difficulties of life and you just have to, all you have to do is get yourself from Edel to Kirk Yadam. And that's not that straightforward sometimes as it turns out, but it's a privilege to be able to do that. So, this will be the last of our daily update videos, and this is my last opportunity to say a massive, massive congratulations to every single person who took part in this race, every person who finished, and in particular, every person who managed to fight their way onto a podium. Once again, we've seen a number of records fall across this event, in the sprint, in the Challenger North, and of course, in the main race. In fact, this will be a little bit of a bittersweet fact for the people who are involved, but more than a dozen runners ran times this time around that would have been course record times had it not been for the runner ahead of them. Now, I've always used this last piece to camera as an opportunity to thank everybody who has contributed to the race. And that is an ever-growing list. I don't think Ryan behind the camera there has SD cards big enough. I'm going to start this time around by thanking Jack Scott. I freely admit, and I said this to Jack, that if you'd have asked me before this race started, I'd have said it was not possible to get here in under 75 hours in winter. It simply couldn't be done. I'm thanking Jack for reminding me that that is exactly what we do here. The very first time this race was held, people told Phil and Scott that nobody would finish, that this couldn't possibly be done. And then three people did. And then year on year, more people have. And year on year, that finishing time has got faster and faster and faster. And I should have seen this coming. Bit by bit, year on year, these runners have shown us that whatever preconceptions we might have had about what the limits of these athletes are, are entirely in our heads. And I thank Jack for reminding us that that is exactly what we do here. What we do here is create a space where these runners can come and disprove any doubts that exist in their heads or in the minds of anyone around them about what they are capable of. Speaking to Jack after his historic win, he was quick to point out that what he did here could only happen as a consequence of so many factors, so many people over so many years. Like his achievement this week goes right the way back to the first time he put on a pair of running shoes and to every decision he's made since, to every person who backed him along the way. And that's very much the case with this race as a whole. Had Phil and Scott not thought that people could do this, we wouldn't be here. Had each and every one of the volunteers involved in this race not decided to come along and support, had every dot watcher not decided to follow, none of what's happened here could ever have happened. And of course, it isn't just for the likes of our course record breakers like Jack Scott, like Joe O'Leary, like Nicky Arthur, like our double winners like Claire Banworth, that we come here year on year and create this space. We do it for each and every entrant, creating a place where they can come and prove to themselves that they are near indestructible, that they can conquer their demons, that they can keep going no matter what happens. I think it's important to understand that resilience isn't never being weak. 
Resilience isn't never having negative thoughts or doubts about yourself. Resilience is the tiny part of you right in the center that keeps shouting at you to move forwards in the middle of that storm of negative thoughts. And we hope that each and every person that touches that wall back there or crosses any of the finish lines behind us goes home realizing that. So thank you once again to each and every volunteer who registered a runner, who served a cup of tea, who comforted somebody in an hour of need, who stood out on a hill in terrible weather to make sure these runners are safe. It absolutely typifies the spine race that up there in one of those refuge huts in the Cheviots for the last few days has been Mark Caldwell, one of the three people to finish the first ever spine race. He's spent the last few days up there helping others do what he did. We are grateful to each and every one of you. And I'm gonna add an extra thank you here to all of the mountain rescue teams up and down the Pennine Way. In fact, all over the UK. For those who don't know, these volunteers rely absolutely on donations from members of the public to keep doing what they're doing. And without them, we couldn't keep our spine race going. Without them, all of us with a love of being in wild places couldn't do what we do. So please, Google your local mountain rescue team and see how you can support them. If you've followed us this far, if you've been following those dots and following the updates, please stick with us. We still have athletes up on the hill and the wind is howling, the rain is pouring and it is still freezing cold. We're gonna be here till the last one crosses the line and we hope you'll be following them right up until they touch that wall as well. And of course, if you find yourself tomorrow missing having those dots to watch, missing having these updates to read, don't worry. It's not gonna to be too long before we're back. We'll see you again in June for the Montaigne Summer Spine Races 2024.